If you're considering using biodegradable mulch to suppress weeds in your field, this is a great video because we're going to analyze a research report and provide you with some information and hopefully some useful information so you can be able to apply this to your own growing situation here on Tobacco University. All right, let's get into biodegradable mulch for weed suppression study related to cannabis production. So first off, this is the research article. Uh, so you're welcome to, again, take a look at it here, look at it for yourself, look at some of the details. I'm just gonna provide a summary. So first off, what was the study objective? Well, to, the study objective was to evaluate the effectiveness of several biodegradable mulches on weed control and yield of processing tomatoes in different areas of Spain. The goal was to find an alternative to standard black polyethylene mulch in order to reduce the waste problem that is generated from that product. This study investigated a field trial at four locations in Spain over three years. It was a randomized complete block design with at least three replicates of nine treatments. So the tomatoes uh, being studied, since a long-term study regarding cannabis of this type does not exist, in this example, tomatoes are being used as a crop of comparison. At the end of the study review, based on the results, uh, specific recommendations for cannabis uh, production will be provided. So again, even though this study was done for tomatoes, they have their own specialties. We're going to try to relate this to cannabis. Now the treatment study, there's, there was nine, and we can see them all listed here, with one being basically an untreated control, one being manual weeding, conventional uh, plastic mulch, and then different types of biodegradable plastic mulch, as well as paper mulch uh, were studied. And you can see the details listed here. You're welcome to pause the video and again, go through these in more detail if it's of interest to you. So weed densities at the four locations. Again, another great opportunity here to kind of pause the video and kind of go through that. We can see the different areas, the different years. So this is what's great about this is we're seeing multiple years of comparison. The weed densities of main weed species found in different years and locations in the untreated control plots 63 days after transplanting. So again, we're having some time for those weeds to, to build up. We see the locations, we see the weed species, we see the total weeds listed right here. Another great here uh, opportunity to pause the video and do a little comparison. Here we're going to move on. So the weed control 63 days post transplanting. So again now we're getting into uh, some more of the numbers here and that's again what makes this study great and allows you maybe if you find something of interest to really go through and look at the specifics and see how that compares. Here we're looking at the weed control 63 days after transplanting depending on the treatment uh, for different locations and years. Now what's just important to note is that we've got our um, letters here and if they all have the same letter, so for example this location, these would be considered not to be statistically different. When we see different letters, that's where we start to see some of the differences in source of comparisons. So just as a quick example here, for this year across all these different trials, basically there was no difference. Even though we're looking at the numbers and go they're different, well we look at kind of put it to a statistical test, there's really, there's really no difference this year no matter what type of weed suppression you used. Other locations, we can see for the vast majority, very similar. We can see here barley straw, vastly different uh, than any of the other treatments. So that's how you kind of go about reading this data table. Income benefits and related tomato data. So we're looking at here cost, income, and benefits. Here's our income, here's our benefit, and percent compared to polyethylene or the standard plastic mulch. So in this example, uh, untreated controls, the percentage compared, would be under, would be less than using polyethylene. Untreated is just leaving it open. You can see here, weeds sure definitely um, added some competition and definitely reduced yields. Others, we can see the polyethylene was kind of that source of comparison, 100%. And we could see everything else uh, was, of course, better than the untreated control, but didn't quite meet the levels of polyethylene here for comparison. Now we will get a category comparison. So biodegradable plastics can be an alternative to polyethylene due to the overall good weed control and high, in this case, tomato yield. Paper mulches do not perform as well overall, but are more diff and are more difficult to apply and avoid um, fracturing. However, these are the only products that control nut sedge emergence. So paper mulches are the only ones we see here that would control nut sedge. So if you have nut sedge as a problem in your area, uh, they can puncture right through plastic mulch. So if you have these as a major uh, 
kind of contaminant, kind of a weed in the, in the field, using the paper mulches can suppress them from being able to poke their way up and through your mulch. Now we also have economic considerations. That's a very important consideration. Uh, biodegradable materials do provide benefits. However, in all cases, they were less when compared to polyethylene or traditional plastic. This is why uh, plastic mulches still remains the most commonly used option, despite the disposal issues as well as some other issues that it has, still the most widely used option. Then we get to manual weeding. So manual weeding did result in low weed densities. However, depending on the area and labor, this may be cost prohibitive, especially depending on the size of your operation. And lastly, when applying these findings to our cannabis production, so in-season plastic offers many benefits, but growers must consider the entire growing season. With a typically well-established root system, based systems of cannabis, this can make the removal of plastic mulches at the end of the season much more challenging, in addition to the disposal issues. If the field you're planting cannabis uh, in it has nut sedge though, which is sadly becoming a bigger problem in many ag agricultural fields, the more I go into, the more problems it seems like there are, uh, growers should consider the use of potential paper mulch because that is the only mulch that is resistant to the emergence of nut sedge. Nut sedge can emerge through plastic mulch, punches right through, and only paper mulch, paper mulch has shown effectiveness at reducing its emergence. So this is where knowing your field can be also be important to know that, hey, there's a lot of nut sedge in this field. Maybe I would consider the use of a paper mulch over a plastic mulch. But as you can see, plastic still regarded as the number one use because of its benefits. But you want to look at this data and see which would might fit your situation the best.